pleasure, what an honor. I'm here with the one and only Colin Firth. Should I say more Darcy? Uh, <laughs> Colin Firth's all right. <laughs> what a lovely movie. Thank you for that. It was incredible. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Let's talk about Mark Darcy, the man who fell in love with Bridget Jones, um, married, then divorced, now they meet again. They may even have a baby together. How would you define this love story, Colin? Well, now, with this film, it's become a long-standing love story. I think that's what makes this one specific and, and uh, it, it defines this. Because the first film was the beginning, and so this is about when people first fall in love. That, you know, that one was about when people first fall in love. The second film was about what happens just after that. You know, the initial difficulties of the relationship. And, but it's, I think it's quite unusual to revisit characters with the same actors 15 years later and have it be really 15 years later you know we didn't put on makeup to pretend it's 15 years later right. we are really older now and so is the audience um, I you know you were probably a child when the first film was shown uh, I wasn't a child but yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know how old you are but it, if you, you know people who were five when the first film came were now 20 uh -huh. and people who were 20 are now 35 so everybody has grown up with the film. aspects of Mark, mature more in this film compared to the previous ones? Um, it's been well, quite a long time, as you just said, right? Well, I didn't remember anything much about uh, playing it. Um, you know, I just know that it, it's a film that has meant something to a lot of people over the years. And uh, people around the world. Around the world, and, uh, and, I, and people know it better than I do. People have seen it more recently. They've seen it several times, some people. I saw it once in 2001. Really? Yeah. So I had to look at it again to say, because I, you know, I, I felt people owned these characters. Do you feel you own something to Mark? Because I, I heard you, you once said that Bridget Jones was kind of like a gift to you, right? Because it opened oh, yeah. many other doors and opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yes, it probably did. If I tried to chart it, there are all sorts of moments that have made some sort of difference, for better or worse, over time. And I, I definitely think Bridget Jones did in terms of film. You know, it was a reference to something I'd done on television, which has also had done, made a difference to things. So yes, I suppose so. And I, I didn't want to, I suppose I didn't want to disappoint the people who um, had something invested. I brought you a nice tea. Thank you. I brought you a super juice. Oh. Let me carry that for you. Thank you. Can I carry your phone? What about Renee? Because she said that she adores you, you're kind of a guy to follow. What is the thing you most like about working with Renee? Oh, endless. There are endless things. She's, um, you know, we don't, we live a long way apart, and so it's not as if I've seen her every day or anything, but we, we've kept somewhat in touch over the years. And she's an, just a relentless, adorable ball of energy, really. You know, she uh, she's very alive. She's... I'm sure when you spoke to her, you saw that, you know, she she's kind, she is um, approachable, and she's incredibly brave as an as an actor. You know, she will she will just throw herself at anything, and very there's a lot of honesty. You know, her face feels honest. You feel you can read everything. I'm Bridget, and this is Jack, and this is Mark. Lovely. You're our second same-sex couple today. <laughs> On the other hand, what is the secret to eternal youth? Argentinian women are wondering, ears don't seem to pass for you. Is it diet, exercise, the Italian wife, the British blood? <laughs> well, I, <laughs> what it, is it? <laughs> it's a really lovely and kind thing for you to, to frame, frame the question that way. But uh, no, I think um, I, I, the years, I, I, I think I exhibit the years as long as, as well as everybody else. You know, if you look at the, at the Bridget Jones film and then you look at the flashbacks. You look just the same. No, no, I think... <laughs> I think, I think Renee's done very, very well. Patrick Dempsey has the wonderful advantage of being new to this film, so there's not, you know, we don't have to look at comparisons to 15 years ago. And then uh, at Hugh Grant's funeral, we see a picture of him at about 30 years old. So, <laughs> uh, you know, he's, um, he's got the eternal... Oh, Which of you is the father? I am. Right. Last but not least, I know you... Um, 
to champion many great causes such as the struggle for the Brazilian tribe to maintain its territory and helping the world refugees. How does being a public figure um, help you in making a difference in the world? I think it cuts both ways. I think it's complicated. Because on the one hand, um, the people who have no voice, which is probably, you know, most people have no public voice. But the, certainly the most disadvantaged people are the ones that cannot possibly get heard. There will be no journalist will listen to them, no politician will listen to them. We'll go to the people who have a voice. The trouble is that the celebrity, I think a lot of people don't want to listen to what a celebrity has to say. So there's a paradoxical situation where I think the, the famous actors and singers and, uh, are often um, not the ideal messenger. But somebody needs to be heard. Do you, you ha I, so I, sometimes I think it's important just to allow yourself to be a conduit for that voice to get to that person. Thank you so much for your time. It was lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. We love you in Argentina.